My friends, how's it going guys? My name is Kai, I'm from the Sober Living Channel and today is day 337 of my journey to sobriety. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please click subscribe. My goal on this channel is to give hope and let people know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope, you can get out of addiction. There is hope out there. I'm living proof of it. I was drinking 24 beers a day for 10 years. I was suicidal, I'm out of it, I'm feeling better now. Thank you so much for joining me. All right, guys, today I have 10 tips for you to get sober. 10 tips that you can follow to start your, your own journey to sobriety. <clears throat> so I have a little list here that I made. So um, yeah, basically these are just tips on how to start getting sober and tips on how to distract yourself basically these are tips for the first three months of getting sober all right so number one the first thing that you want to do is talk to your doctor you know if you are very far bit here basically if you are so far into your addiction that you shake when you don't have your drug of choice then the first thing that you need to do is go and talk to your doctor because your doctor is going to be able to set you up with the right medication to be able to uh, help you come down from those feelings because going off of your drug of choice cold turkey uh, can be very dangerous. Um, I'm not too sure with other drugs because I'm an alcoholic but I know for a fact that um, for me I could have gone through seizures, I could have gone through convulsions, I could have gone through a lot of things. So when I detoxed at the hospital, I had to like be in my own area, I had to detox myself and I had to do it under doctor supervision to prevent those things. So just make sure that if you do have the shakes, <clears throat> the first thing that you should do is talk to your doctor, all right? Um, if you don't have the, the shakes, uh, the first thing you should do, here's number two on my list of things, is talk to your family, you know? Your family are the people that are probably going to back you the most, you know? They care about you, they want you to get better, they love you, your parents want you to get better. If you have a brother or sister, they love you so much. So talk to them, let them know that you wanna get sober, let them know that it's time for you to make that commitment, let them know that you've made the decision to stop. They're gonna be hopefully very supportive. And you know what, if they're not supportive, this is the time in your life where you have to cut out toxic people because Toxic people can really, really stunt your growth as a new sober person. Uh, number three on my list is talk to your friends. Now, at, right after your support group from your family, your friends are gonna be your next support group. And again, if you talk to your friends and you say, hey guys, listen, I'm getting sober, I don't wanna drink anymore, or I don't wanna use my DOC anymore, and they don't wanna hang out with you, or they say, oh man, we're not gonna be able to party with you anymore, you know? They're not really your friends. If people are upset with you <clears throat> for wanting to quit your drug because they can't party with you anyway anymore, they don't care about you. You're essentially just an entertaining object that comes to their house while you drink you know that is not fun you know you don't want to be objectified like that it's not fair to you it's not fair to you and a lot of the time if you get a group of uh, alcoholics together or any other DOC and everyone's using nobody really cares about each other's company they just care about kind of having somebody around while they use you know um okay number four now this is not about talking to anybody this is the physical stuff that you can do now number four for me is just get outside i know so many addicts they don't get outside they sit inside they sit in their basement they 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 sequester themselves from society and they just 
wallow in their own filth. You know, I know I've been there. But what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to get outside. Go for a walk. When you wake up, if you live in suburbia, just go for a walk around the block. If you live in the city, go for a walk, you know? If you live out in the country, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter where you live. When you wake up in the morning, go for a walk. If there's somewhere beautiful like this, you know, go and, and enjoy it just for a little bit, you know? It'll, it'll, it'll make you feel much better. It, even if you don't enjoy nature, you, you'll look around and you'll notice that there's so many little things like, like the bark on the trees or, or the pine cones hanging in this, uh, the tree or even just the way that the sun's rays come off of the, the leaves. You know, I find it so absolutely beautiful. Um, okay, number five, join a gym. And uh, if you're not going to join a gym, do some lifting or some running or some uh, pumping. Pump it up, pump up your muscles. <laughs> you know, so get physically active. Right before I went into rehab, I was 135 pounds, I was incredibly skinny fat, I was so skinny but I had this gut, um, I could barely lift 35 pounds, I was incredibly weak, it was awful, but when I got into the gym and I got into, um, like at the rehab they had a gym there and you had to go for a certain amount of time every every day and once I got into the gym my when I went in my arms were tiny like that and now you know not to boast or anything but I'm looking good compared to what I was doing I'm looking so much better than what I was I was 135 pounds and I looked terrible now I'm 185 pounds and I look great but even better I feel great I feel good I feel confident and I don't feel like an ugly loser anymore so what I would say is one thing that really really helps you stay sober is get into the gym get into some physical activity it'll really help you stay sober I'm on my lunch break again I do these videos on my lunch break because I work during the entire day and I want to be able to have a nice daytime shot for you guys. So bear with me if the next little part is rushed. I've only got 10 minutes to get back to work. All right, um, next one, find a hobby. You got to find a hobby, whether it's card collecting, whether it's... Um, crap, there's so many. I don't care if you're stamp or coin collecting model building there's so many different hobbies out there find yourself a hobby um, it could it could quite literally be anything it could be fishing it could be hunting it could be um, crocheting it doesn't matter find yourself a hobby something that you can keep your hands busy with you know because that's the big thing that you're going to have to figure out what to do. Now that you're not doing your drug of choice, what are you going to do, you know? So find something, ideally something that requires a lot of brain power um, to do. I love Lego. Lego for me is, um, it, it helps my brain a lot because it helps me focus on one thing. Uh, Lego can be expensive though, so maybe buy the knockoff Lego. You can buy the exact same Lego sets, just the knockoff version for like 75% off. I would recommend doing something like that. Um, but find yourself a hobby. Um, number seven on the list is play video games. That kind of goes in with the hobby, but video games are an incredible distraction. They're an incredible way to get your mind out of all of the nonsense that's going on in this world and put yourself in a, in a character that you have full control of and you can just play in this whole world all by yourself and you can do whatever you want. Play a video game. If you've never heard of the video game Skyrim, it's an incredible 
action adventure medieval game where you're slaying dragons and casting magic it's not like Harry Potter at all but it's an incredible adventure game it's been released on essentially every video game system you can think of that is a game that I have personally spent probably 2,000 hours playing I would highly recommend you play that game because it's a game where you can quite literally do anything you want. You can, if you want to literally be a bread maker and live a, so, a, a short, not a short, a, a, a solitary life as a bread maker near solitude, then that's fine. If you want to be an epic warrior <clears throat> who shouts fire out of his mouth, you can do that too. Play Skyrim. It's a fantastic game. All right. Number eight on the list, go to meetings, go to your AA meetings, go to NA meetings, go to SA meetings, go to CA meetings. There are so many different types of meetings out there. It's phenomenal. And you know what? They happen every single day. Right now, right when you're watching this video, there's a meeting going on that you could click off of this video and join a Zoom meeting. You could do it right now. I would recommend join a Zoom meeting because in these meetings you can corroborate your stories with a lot of other people. You can talk to a lot of other people that are going through the same situation as you. And remember, AA is not what they make it look like on TV. It's not just a whole bunch of people crying and all of that. It's not like that at all. What AA is, is usually a bunch of people sharing their accomplishments. They're usually a bunch of people sharing the, the great things that they manage to do in spite of alcohol you know Bob came in the other day and said you know what for the first time I sat down at my son's softball game and I didn't get kicked out because I was sober and I wasn't yelling at the ref and I didn't make an ass out of myself those are the kind of stories that you're gonna hear at AA you know I would recommend go to a meeting, find a support network. There are people there that are going to want to help you just like me. Um, uh, oh, and number nine, sorry, that kind of went into a join a support group. So my number nine is once you're at one of those AA meetings and you can go to any AA meeting in the world now that Zoom is a thing, find a support group and join that group and check in with them because they'll check in with you because they care about you. I joined my support group when I was in the hospital and I still regularly get texts from them just asking me, hey Kai, are you doing well? How is everything going? We're thinking about you because they genuinely care about you. So join one of those groups, especially if you feel like you're alone. There are people that feel exactly like you and they will help you, I promise. And uh, my number, my last one, my last uh, tip to help maybe uh, help get you sober is take a look at your old photos. Take a look at photos of yourself before you started using. Take a couple, take a couple moments to look at photos of you and your family, you and your parents, you and your grandparents, you and your mother, you and your grandmother, you know? Take a look at those photos of you before you were using, and maybe that will inspire you to not use anymore. I know it helped me a lot. Other than that, guys, I gotta get back to work or else I'm gonna get in big trouble. Ouch. All right, guys. Other than that, I'm still doing the 250 uh, subscriber giveaway. Let's get to 250 subscribers right when we do. I'm gonna be donating um, $100 split between all the continents on Earth. Uh, we also have a giveaway going out to uh, our Asian uh, followers. That is on a separate video, uh, but you can find it on the channel. All you need to do is comment on that. 
Guys, I really, really appreciate this. I can't imagine uh, that I would have been ever doing this, so I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I don't have anything else to say, so wherever you are in the whole wide world, please be sober, and if you're not sober, just be safe. We're all thinking about you. Your parents love you. I care about you. Wherever you are, I'm Kyle. It's a hot day here in Southern Ontario. I'll talk to you guys later. God bless, and stay safe. Bye, guys. Bye.